So now we have the next talk by Daniel Rausch uh, in collaboration with Half Custers and Céline Chevalier on embedding the UC model in the IITM model. Thank you very much for the introduction. So as probably all of you know, universal composability is a widely used concept for defining and analyzing protocol security. It not only offers us with uh, very strong security guarantees that hold true with an arbitrary polynomial time context, but also offers composability via so-called composition theorems that enable a modular security analysis and also allow for reusing security results later on in a different context. Just to make sure everyone here is on the same page, let me briefly how you see security is defined. So you start by modeling the protocol that you want to analyze, the so-called real protocol, say some key exchange, and then also define an ideal protocol or ideal functionality that specifies the task at hand in a perfectly secure way. So F is secure by definition. The real protocol P is then set to realize the ideal protocol F or is as secure as the ideal protocol if for all possible attackers attacking the network of P, we can construct an ideal attacker or simulator attacking the network of F, such that no environment can distinguish both cases, where the environment essentially subsumes arbitrary concurrent protocols. Over the past two decades, since its initial inception, a large number of different models for universal composability have been proposed. All of them use the same basic idea, so also in terms of the security definition, but then they differ sometimes very drastically in how they implement this idea on a technical level and also in terms of features that they offer, say in terms of supported protocols and composition types. The relationship between these models so far is mostly unexplored. So how do they relate in terms of expressiveness? If we can analyze the protocol in one model, can we also analyze the protocol in every other UC model or universal composability model? If one model supports a specific feature, can we implement the same feature also in a different model? What about the strength of security results? Do we perhaps accidentally miss some attacks since we, due to a lack of better knowledge, chose some model that only provides strictly weaker security guarantees than a different one? And given the fractured state of the literature, what about the original goal of reusability? If we have several protocols, each of them having been analyzed in different models, can we still combine, still compose those results, say by first mapping a protocol, including all security results to a different model? So our goal is to initiate a line of research that fills this gap in the literature by formally relating models for universal composability. This not only allows for an educated choice of a model, say in terms of the strengths of the security results that one can obtain, but this also should allow us as far as possible to map and then reuse protocols, security results, and also features from one model to other ones. In our work, we start this line of research by relating the UC and IRTM models. The UC model we chose because it's the predominant model in the literature. So there's an extensive array of existing protocols and security results that have been analyzed in a wide variety of settings. The IRTM model, on the other hand, offers many interesting features, such as seamless support for protocols and composition with joint, global, arbitrarily shared state. It can express the globally shared session IDs that are commonly used in the UC model, but can also express locally managed session IDs, and it can combine all of the above. Furthermore, there are protocols that have already been analyzed in the IITM model, but have not yet been analyzed in the or captured in the UC model, thereby making a comparison and ideally also mapping from one model to another one particularly interesting. So as the title of our paper already reveals, our main result is that the UC model can be fully embedded into the IITM model. A bit more specifically, we first relate both models uh, in terms of the concepts that they use, which often try to achieve a similar overarching goal, but drastically differ in their technical details. 
We then propose a mapping taking arbitrary UC protocols to corresponding IITM ones and show that our mapping preserves security results and composability results. So as an immediate practical benefit, this means by using this mapping, we can combine existing UC results with the aforementioned IITM features. We also took a look at the other direction and identified that a full embedding of the entire IITM model into the UC model is impossible in general. Along the way, we found and fixed several issues in the UC model that formally invalidate the UC composition theorem and also present a modeling technique that enables a new type of composition based on existing composition theorems. So in the rest of my talk, I will give you an overview of our main results. And I want to start by giving you some examples of the concepts used in the UC and the IITM model to illustrate why a comparison of both of them is non-trivial to begin with. So let me start by briefly recapping the computational frameworks. The UC model considers an environment and an adversary running with some protocol pi. The protocol PI consists of several instances where only highest level instances can actually interact with the environment. And each of these instances is identified uniquely via a global extended ID, which consists of the code of the instance, a party or process identifier, and a session identifier. Instances can then send messages to each other by issuing an external write command of the following form, which consists of a forced write flag that distinguishes different types of external writes, a real sender flag, a target receiver tape, which can be the input, output, or backdoor tape, the extended identities of both the sender and receiver, including their codes, a number of import or runtime tokens that the sender forwards to the receiver, and of course, the message body itself. So given such an external write command, the UC model then interprets this and delivers the message, which might, for example, lead to the creation of a new instance with the intended receiver ID. There's one special case though, namely if the highest level instance provides some output, then this might get rewritten and redirected to the environment instead, allowing other protocols, essentially higher level protocols to connect to this protocol. So let's compare this to the IITM setting, which also considers an environment and an adversary running with a protocol. However, there we already have one difference, namely a protocol in the IITM setting considers a statically fixed number of machines, each of them specifying some machine code that is used in the protocol. These machines can then be connected with each other, the environment and the adversary using tapes, which allows for sending messages. One detail here is that the IITM model also allows for connecting subroutines to the, uh, the environment, which is used, for example, to capture global state in the IITM model. And then during a run of the protocol, each of these uh, machines can spawn an unbounded number of instances. So basically machines are like classes and can be used to derive several objects or instances during a run. A machine instance can then also send messages to other machine instances by writing it directly on a connected tape. So this message gets then delivered to MC3 in this case. Specifically, the existing instances of this machine now run a user-specified check address algorithm that is part of the machine code to determine whether they are the intended receiver of this message. The first instance that accepts gets to process the message. And if none of them accepts, then a new instance is created that processes the message. This flexible addressing mechanism is used, for example, uh, to uh, model different types of joint and shared state. So as we can see already, the computational models are very different. Let me give you another example, namely runtime notions. Both models want to achieve that the overall system is essentially simulatable by a polynomial time machine, which is necessary for composition. In the UC model, this works by letting the environment start with a polynomial number of runtime tokens, which the environment is then allowed to distribute to the attacker and the protocol throughout the protocol run. So one possible distribution at some point in the run might look as follows. 
all instances, including the adversary and environment, are then required to run in polynomial time in the number of their currently held runtime tokens. Meaning that since the environment can uh, determine how many tokens the adversary and the uh, protocol receive, the environment can also determine how much runtime the protocol and the simulator have, possibly forcing them to stop at some point, which then also has to be taken into account in our security proof. To somewhat alleviate this issue, the UC model also requires environments to be balanced. So the adversary, and in particular the simulator, must receive at least as many runtime tokens as the protocol. The IITM model takes a more abstract approach that is based on results by Hofheinz et al. Basically, it says environments are required to be PPT. And protocols must be such that if they are combined with some arbitrary environment, the combined system runs in overall polynomial time. So uh, this doesn't fix a specific mechanism, but this abstract notion is rather naturally met by protocols from the literature. For example, if you can see your protocol to run in polynomial time in all of its inputs or the length of all of its inputs, then it meets this notion. This is then extended in essentially the same way to adversaries. If we add an adversary to the system, then this must still for arbitrary environments run in overall polynomial time. Let me give one final example, namely composition. So the UC theorem considers the setting that we have already shown that some protocol pi realizes some protocol phi. The analysis is for a single protocol session and a restricted class of environments that adhere to some predicate sheep. We also consider a protocol row that uses potentially several subroutine sessions of phi. Uh, and the theorem then implies that if we consider the composed protocol that rather uses pi as a subroutine, then this composed protocol realizes the original protocol row. To express this composed protocol, the UC model introduces some shellcode that internally redirects messages to a different subroutine and also has a few conditions that need to be met. In particular, the subroutines have to be shown to be subroutine respecting and subroutine exposing, and the combined uh, protocol row must be shown to be compliant. In comparison, the IITM model considers two different types of composition. Firstly, the main theorem essentially states if we have some protocol pi realizing some protocol phi, and we build a higher level protocol on top of phi that connects to some, but not necessarily all of its external tapes, then the composed protocol where we replace the subroutine realizes this original protocol. In the IITM setting, composed protocol is expressed by reconnecting tape, and this statement holds true as long as the higher level machines connect only to external tapes of the subroutines. Observe that this directly considers a multi-session setting and that subroutines can still share some tapes with the environment, which is why this theorem captures as special cases also protocols with joint state, shared state, and global state. To also support a single session security analysis, the ITM model provides a second composition theorem, which states that if a single session of pi realizes a single session of phi, then an unbounded number of sessions of pi realize an unbounded number of sessions of phi. This uh, statement holds true as long as pi and phi are sigma session versions, so essentially have disjoint state, and can then also be combined with the previous composition theorem to uh, yield more complex compositional statements. So let me briefly summarize. As we have seen, the UC and IITM models are quite different, not only in their computational frameworks, but also in their compositional statements. And they even use different classes of environments, adversaries, simulators, and protocols. So it's not at all easy to see how they, they relate. And given that they use different classes of environments and simulators, whether there's a general relationship in the first place. Uh, our work answers these questions. More specifically, we first propose a generic mapping, taking an arbitrary UC protocol and constructing a corresponding IITM protocol. 
I won't go into the details of this mapping here, but let me give you some key insights. So first of all, all aspects of the UC protocol can be translated naturally into the IITM setting. This even includes subroutines that might have dynamically generated machine code. In the IITM setting, we can capture this by including a specific universal Turing machine where one instance of this universal Turing machine directly corresponds to a UC instance whose code was dynamically generated and behaves in exactly the same way. Furthermore, the IITM protocol has to reveal an upper bound of all runtime tokens received so far to the adversary. This is necessary because in the UC setting, the same information is guaranteed to be provided by UC environments as side channel information to adversary and also simulator, whereas IITM environments need not provide this information to the simulator. So we instead implement the same side channel on the level of the protocol. And we finally propose a variation of this protocol, which enforces the Xi identity bound on arbitrary environments on the protocol level. So we can then use the existing IRTM theorems that don't reason about restricted classes of environments. So our main result then states that if we have some protocol pi and a protocol phi that, uh, or that realizes a protocol phi in the UC setting, then our map protocol pi realizes the map protocol phi in the IITM setting. We show this result via several intermediate hybrid steps. Among others, we show that UC security implies single session IITM security for the class of adversaries that adhere to the UC runtime notion. And then show, again, we have several steps, that this implies general IITM security also for adversaries that might not meet the UC runtime notion. We are further able to show that the intermediate step uh, also implies the uh, UC security, thereby showing that our mapping is non-trivial. It doesn't just preserve security results, but also distinguishing attacks. However, more generally, full IRTM security in an arbitrary setting uh, is not, uh, does not actually imply UC security. Namely, we are also able to show that if time lock posits exist, then there are UC protocols such that no simulator exists. But for the mapped protocols, we can construct an IRTM simulator and prove security. That's not a specific of our mapping, but rather applies to pretty much any mapping that preserves the behavior of the UC protocols. The underlying reason is intuitively that the runtime of the IITM simulator is allowed to depend on the runtime of the environment. So our simulation can accommodate for particularly powerful environments that try to overwhelm the simulator. The same is not possible for the UC simulator, which must essentially work independently of how much runtime the environment uses. Our theorem then also implies as a direct corollary that also composition results carry over. Namely, if we start in the UC setting with UC protocols, apply the UC theorem to uh, obtain composed UC protocols, then we can use our mapping to obtain composed IITM protocols. Of course, that doesn't tell us much how the composition theorems of the UC and IITM model actually relate to each other, which is why we additionally show that the same result can also be directly obtained in the IITM model. Namely, we can first map the original UC protocols into the IITM model, and then the IITM theorem also implies security for the composed protocols. So in other words, this result shows that the IITM theorem captures the UC theorem as a special case, by which I mean that it also applies if some of the input protocols aren't actually mapped from the UC model, but are custom IITM ones. So for example, instead of considering the map protocol row, we can build or use an existing IITM protocol Q that uses the map subroutine phi, and then the IITM theorem also implies security for this case. So as for the other direction, let me briefly give a summary. So as I mentioned, the other direction of a full embedding of the IITM model into the UC model is impossible in general, since there are several gaps. One of them has already been shown in prior work, namely has been shown that there are natural protocols that meet the uh, IITM runtime notion, but not the UC runtime notion, hence they cannot be expressed in the UC model. 
To this, we add the aforementioned impossibility result due to different simulator classes. So security might not necessarily carry over. And uh, we also identify another gap, namely, unlike IATM protocols, a UC protocol is required to pri uh, provide an additional oracle to the adversary that reveals whether certain instances already exist. This is not just a cosmetic or technical difference, but actually changes security properties whenever the existence of an instance depends on some secret information. So we can, or there exist protocols that can be shown secure, but once we add such an oracle, there is no simulator anymore. So let me summarize and conclude my talk. Our work is the first that clarifies the relationship of the UC and the IATM models. On the one hand, we show that all UC protocols and security results carry over to the IATM model, meaning as an immediate benefit that existing UC results can now also be combined with all of the aforementioned IATM features, such as joint, global, and arbitrarily shared state, locally managed session IDs, larger classes of protocols and simulators, and combinations of the above. On the other hand, we also established that there are several gaps that make a full embedding of the IITM model into the UC model impossible in general, and leave it as interesting future work to identify and then also map a subset of the IITM model and a subset of security results that still carry over to the UC setting. With that, I conclude my talk and want to thank you very much for your attention. Do we have questions from the audience? Yes, please come to the microphone so the people online can hear you. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, how easy do you think it is to, uh, you know, continue this line of work and maybe use some of the same techniques to continue to map out this universe you had in the beginning? Uh, so I think there are a few models that intuitively already share a few similarities with the IITM models. So for example, the uh, static structures of protocols uh, that is used in the IITM model doesn't seem so far away from the constructive, co uh, constructive cryptography model. Uh, which on the other hand, for example, doesn't fix a specific runtime notion, but considers an arbitrary class of environments that the protocol designer can then customize. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there would be some interesting and not too hard to obtain results there, in particular also in terms of identifying uh, how exactly these classes of protocols and environments then fit into each other. Uh, another interesting candidate might be the GNU-C model, which already structurally is uh, on the one hand, uh, tries to keep the spirit of the UC model, but then also has a few components such as a code library, if I remember correctly, which fixes the codes that the protocol uses, which again seems uh, more similar to what the IITM model starts with. So I can also imagine that there are uh, some interesting results that one can obtain over there. Uh, but of course, the literature is very wide and varied. Uh, there are probably also a few models that are so far, uh, at least at the first glance, from uh, the models I've personally worked with, that it might be quite difficult to relate them, or maybe they are even incomparable since, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, for the UC and the ITM case, since we had uh, different classes of environments and simulators, it wasn't very clear whether there's a general relationship in the first place. Maybe one can do something for subsets in this case and at least identify maybe some sufficient conditions for a mapping. Thank you very much. So we have another question. Yeah, one quick one maybe. Thank you very much for a nice presentation. So, I mean, by now what we usually have seen that, for example, more efficient protocols like as this knocks, they are not UC. So because of succin, we don't have black box extraction. So once we move them to the UC, we lose the efficiency usually. So my question is about this mapping from UC to this IITM setting. So do you have a, again overhead to the protocol? So we will lose again efficiency to achieve this proper properties. Uh, excuse me, what exactly was the final question? I didn't Yeah, quite... I mean the, about the mapping, you said that for example, we show that it so for example, UC protocols 
can achieve the same security or we have a map to do this. I mean, so my question is about this map, how efficiently this map happens usually. Uh, so uh, how efficiently this mapping actually Yeah, for example, is. is there any overhead? How much this is? Well, basically what it boils down to is that we implement on the IITM level uh, those features and operations that are essentially uh, provided directly by the computational model uh, in the UC world. So for example, we add some code that simulates the external write command. Uh, since this uh, overhead in the UC case isn't directly counted as runtime of the protocol, but rather somehow essentially ha happens externally, um, there is a bit of technical overhead, but as we already uh, also show in our work, this overhead that is added still remains polynomial in what the original UC protocol does. Otherwise, in particular, the mapping wouldn't work if we had some exponential blow up somewhere, then it wouldn't meet the IITM notion anyway. Okay, so technically it's the same. Okay, thank you. Do we have more questions from the audience? Yes, please. Um, just a like a general question. If it were the case that you were trying to connect some of the other frameworks and that you described at the beginning together, and you found that two of them are not compatible together, would that may that imply that there's something wrong in one of these frameworks, hypothetically? Uh, I think that strongly depends on the gap that you identify. So in any case, you would have to look very closely what goes wrong. So for example, if the gap is due to different simulator classes, we would have to identify whether the simulator class of one of these models might be unreasonably large. So permit simulation in cases where no simulation uh, should be possible. So maybe we miss attacks by this. Uh, or alternatively, it might turn out that in one case, the simulator class is just needlessly small. That's actually something we also did as part of uh, our work since we had such a gap uh, with the simulator classes. And in our case, we argue that, uh, well, the UC class is just more restricted than it need be, while the IITM class still provides uh, reasonable security guarantees. Of course, the gap can also be for entirely different reasons. So for example, you also have models that specifically include quantum operations in the Turing machines or don't consider Turing machines in the first place, uh, better set. So then you already consider an entirely different setting. So the incompatibility might simply be because you consider more powerful adversaries protocols with operations that cannot be expressed in the original setting anymore, in which case the statement would just be, well, okay, it's just for different purposes and different contexts that they model, but both of them might still be reasonable. Okay, thank you. And we have the last question, after which we're going to have to take the rest of the questions offline due to the approaching IACR membership meeting. Um, yeah, thanks for your presentation. I was just uh, wondering how come you guys don't consider GUC and JUC to be part of UC? Um, so as for GUC, there was some recent paper that on the one hand argued that the GUC proof itself isn't really complete, uh, but showed that there are modeling techniques that one can use to express global state in the basic UC model. Uh, these would, of course, then also be captured by our mapping since it's for arbitrary UC protocols, including those that use this uh, modeling technique to capture global state. Um, but uh, in this case, uh, I guess it's probably easier to, uh, if one wants to model global state, uh, to perhaps directly express this in the IITM model, since our mapping then introduces some UC structures of this uh, global state mapping for UC that aren't necessarily needed uh, if one works directly in the IITM model. As for JUC, uh, well, this extension was for the original UC model, which has already been overhauled. Um, depending on how you count, there are at least three major updates that change a lot of things on a technical level. Uh, so it's not clear whether the original JUC result even applies to UC anymore. And uh, also there has been work that uh, has argued that the JUC model itself has been flawed in terms of the proof of the composition theorem. 
So uh, at least as far as I'm aware, there currently is no work that uh, supports uh, joint state either in the UC model directly or by extending the current version of the UC model in some way. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker again. And that's the end of our session. See you at the run session.